Hello crafters! Today I'm going to show you how to make a Plarn grocery store bag using recycled grocery bags. I have a video all about making Plarn that I will link in the card up there and I have another video where I show a pattern for another bag. I will also link that in the cards up top but today I'm going to show you another Plarn bag style and this is specifically to be used as a grocery store bag so we're going to make it with dimensions and sizing that will make sense for that. So first you will need your plarn. How much plarn do you need for this project? I will give a count here, a pop-up on screen, based on weight, approximately how many bags this will take. And then I'm using this size J hook. I will pop up the millimeters on the screen. I think it's a six millimeter hook, but I'll pop up on the screen because I might be off on that. So the design of this plarn bag is going to be a rectangular bottom, and then we're going to crochet up the sides and also add straps. So just like working with yarn, we're going to take the end of our plarn and make a slip knot in it. and size it down. It can be helpful if you hold kind of at the base of the knot because if you just straight up pull it might tear so try to kind of support it there but size it down to your hook and now we're ready to make our foundation chain. So I'm going to make my foundation chain I'm just going to chain just like normal and I want the base of my bag to be about 12 inches wide so I'm going to just keep working chains until I have 12 inches here and then I will tell you how many chains that is. Well really I'll pop it up on screen now. And the number you see popping up on screen right now that is how many chain stitches it took me to get 12 inches but you of course can adjust this if you want your bag to be smaller or you want it larger or maybe you just want to use a different hook size it might not be the same number but I'm going to give you both the counts and explain how I'm constructing the bag so you can either make yours with the exact same counts as mine or you can use the same concept and make your bag whatever dimensions you want. So for me to get the 12 inch length it took me 31 stitches so 31 chain stitches. So now we are ready for row one. I'm going to start by chaining one and this will be my turning chain and then turning my work and in the second chain from my hook I'm going to work a single crochet into that chain. And we're working just the way we would, even if we were working with yarn, just we're working with the plarn. And it doesn't feed quite as well as yarn does, but it's the same basic mechanism. So that's my first stitch. I'm going to have a total of 31 single crochet stitches all the way along. So I'm inserting my hook, yarning over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And I'm going to work this all the way down the end. So I will have a total of 31 single crochet stitches, and then we'll be ready for row two. So here is row one, 31 single crochets. And for the next several rows, we're just going to repeat row one. And just as a reminder, this is going to be the bottom rectangular base of our bag. I want my bag to have a two inch depth. So I'm going to do enough rows to get to a two inch depth and I'll pop up here with the row count for that. But to repeat row one, I'm going to chain one, turn my work. And in all 31 single crochet of the previous round, I am going to work a single crochet stitch. So here's my first single crochet stitch. Work my second one in the following stitch. And as a quick note, when I pull the plarn up, I'm making sure to slide that loop onto the thick part of the hook. The plarn doesn't like to slide as well as yarn does, like with yarn it would really easily slide up here, but if you're not careful you might not actually slide it all the way up and get your loop big enough, so make sure to leave enough slack to be able to slide that up and then continue working your stitch. So even with this I'm not going to stop there, I'm going to make sure to slide that loop up my hook so that way it stretches out to be as big as I need it to be. And then stitch number three and just keep working 31 stitches down and then repeat this until your bag is as deep as you want it to be. So I've completed rows one through six and at this point we basically have a rectangle that's going to form the base of the bag that is about 12 inches long by two inches deep. So now we're going to start working in the round all the way around this edge to build up the sides of our bag. So round seven is going to start off the same way we did rows one through six where we chain one, turn our work, and work 31 single crochet down this side. But then once we get to the far end, we're not going to stop and turn our work. We're gonna keep working and work around the edges. So let me work these first 31 single crochet of round seven, and then I'll meet you for the next part. So I've worked 31 single crochet down this side of the bag. Now we need to work some single crochet along this side. So since I did six rows, I'm going to do six single crochet along the side of the bag, one stitch at the end of each row. 
So at the end of my first row here, I'm gonna work a single crochet and it's a little tricky to figure out where to insert because the plarn can be a little tight. So I'm just going to roughly estimate where the end of each row is and just wherever I can get my hook through, that's where I'm gonna work my stitch. So that was my first single crochet. My second single crochet, I'm working at the end of the next row. Again, the plarn doesn't slide as well as normal yarn does. Just take your time with it and you'll get the hang of it. So that's two. I'll work my third one at the end of the next row. Fourth one at the end of the next row. Fifth one at the end of the next row. And then a sixth one at the end of my last row. So this is still round seven. We worked along this side, we worked along the short side, and now we need to work along this long side here, basically the opposite side of the chain from where we very first began. And I'm going to work a total of 31 single crochet along this edge, one on the opposite side of each chain. And I'll also work over this tail so I don't have to weave it in later on. So this is one single crochet, Go to the next spot right there. This is single crochet number two. The next spot, single crochet number three. And four. And I'm gonna work 31 on down the side and then I'll show you how we work on the fourth side, which will just be the same as this side here, but I'll show you that part anyway. All right, so I worked 31 single crochet stitches down my third side. So I've worked 31 single crochet, six single crochet on the short end, 31 single crochet on this long end, and now we're going to work six more single crochet along this edge right here. And we're gonna do this pretty much the same way that we did the opposite short end. So I'm just gonna figure out where I can insert at the end of a row and work my first single crochet at the end of the first row. Second single crochet, work it at the end of the second row. Third single crochet, work at the end of the third row. Fourth single crochet, work at the end of the fourth row. Fifth single crochet at the end of the fifth row. And again, sometimes it's a little tricky to get your hook in there, just get your hook in there where you can. And a sixth single crochet at the end of the sixth row. And mine's a little bit close to the beginning of round seven, that's okay. And at this point we've set things up so that we can work around the edge of the bag. You do have the option where you can either just spiral around or you can slip stitch and join. For this bag, I feel like slip stitching and joining. So I'm gonna find my first stitch from round seven, insert my hook in the top of it, Yarn over and pull that through everything on my hook to slip stitch it together. And then to start round eight, I will chain one and I will work 31 single crochet, then six single crochet, then 31 single crochet, and then six more for a total of 74 stitches in each round. If you were spiraling, you of course wouldn't do the slip stitch and you wouldn't do the chain one, but you would still work the same 74 single crochet around. And that is what I'm going to do for the rest of the height of my bag. If you want to vary it some, you can change between single crochet and half double crochet or double crochet stitches. I personally like to make the bottoms of my bags in single crochet just because I find it gives the bags more strength. But for row eight onward, it's just working 74 stitches all the way around. So I've chained one, work a single crochet in my first stitch, single crochet in my next stitch. That's two, three, four, and so on. And when I get to the corners, I'm not gonna do anything different when I get down here. I'm just gonna work one in each stitch, just working in the round. So let me work up the sides of the bag and then I'll show you some progress. So at this point, I have worked 20 rounds of this bag. The first six were the bottom, and then I've gone up 13 rows on the side, working single crochet stitches, and my rounds have a total of 74 stitches. 
So I've got a pretty good distance here at the bottom. For the rest of the bag, I'm gonna swap over to doing double crochet because it will work a little faster. I just like to do the single crochet at the bottom because it both makes it more dense at the bottom so things are less likely to fall out. And I think it makes it a little sturdier than the double crochet. So if you decide you want to swap to double crochet, it's the same exact concept as what we were already doing. So I'm working in rounds that I joined, so I'm gonna start by chaining two, one, two, and then the first stitch and all the remaining stitches around, I'm going to work double crochet. So this is my first double crochet. And then a second double crochet in the next stitch. And again, I'm making sure to slide all the loops up to the thickest part of my hook so that way I can get my next loops through. And I'll just keep crocheting with double crochet around and when I get back to the beginning, I will join with a slip stitch in the top of the round and go on to my next row. And then just repeat this until I get my bag as tall as I want it to be. All right, so I've finished crocheting my bag as tall as I want it to be. Let me show you some things here and then I'll show you how I'm going to add handles. So first of all, as far as the stitching the rest of the way up, of course you can do stick with the single crochet the whole way through. You can do double crochet. What I ended up doing was I did kind of this pattern of four rows of double crochet, three rows of single crochet, four rows of double, three rows of single, and then six rows of double just to get to the height I wanted and then finished off with a row of single crochet. You can swap back and forth between double and single crochet as much or as little as you want. You could stick with just one, mix it up. I was originally planning to do double crochet the rest of the way up, but I kind of like the sturdiness of the single crochet bands and it just adds a little extra texture and character to the bag, but that's totally optional. So next we need to talk about the dimensions of my bag because I made this bag way bigger than I was intending to. But this bag, laying flat, measures about 14 inches wide and about 16 inches tall. Now you might remember when we started, we made the base be 12 inches long. Of course, because we also had some width to it this direction, that means when we lay it flat, there's gonna, it's gonna fold out a little bit wider. But if we were to open it up, those extra two inches from that 12 inch to 14 inches will really just be more like the sides of the bag. That's where those extra two inches came from. I forgot to account for that, but like I said, you can make this bag any size that you want. But this is the size I'm going to make my bag. So now it's time to fasten it off. And what I like to do is I like to, before I pull up that loop through, I like to just come further down on my project and leave plenty of length and just cut the plarn off. So we just have a tail here. And then I'll take this tail and feed it through this remaining loop, pull it all the way through. I go like that and then just carefully cinch it down. That'll finish off my bag and of course I've got to deal with these tail ends. I will use a needle to just weave it down through the stitching here. But then last of all we need to put some handles on this bag. So I'm going to do really simple handles on this bag. We'll just do some double crochet stitches and basically I'm going to start by putting a slip knot on my hook, sizing it down on the hook figuring out how far in from the edge of the bag I want my handles to sit. Right about here looks good. And then I'm gonna do some double crochet. So here's where I'm gonna start my handle. And I like to do a floating double crochet is what I call it, where I start with a slip knot on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over and then insert into the stitch where I wanna work. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two yarn over, pull through two. And that'll basically join me to the top edge of the bag with a double crochet stitch. And I'll probably make this handle about four double crochet stitches wide, maybe five. But just working across, so that's my second one. Third double crochet. And a fourth double crochet. And then we'll turn our bag over and just work in rows. Now as a little tip, I find that my chains don't look as even and they tend to be a little tighter. So what I like to do instead of doing a turning chain is to do an alternative turning chain. I'll show you once in this video how to do the alternative turning chain, but if you wanna learn more about it, click the card up there for the full tutorial. But basically, I've turned my work and in my first stitch, I insert my hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. So I have two loops on my hook now. Yarn over and pull through two. So that's kind of like a single crochet. And then on this left vertical bar of that stitch I just worked, I'm gonna insert underneath there from right to left, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. 
And that is the alternative turning chain, and I'll let that count as my first double crochet. And then to complete the row, I will work three more double crochet, so one in the next stitch. So that counts as my second double crochet for the row. My third double crochet in the following stitch. And fourth double crochet in this last stitch. And then I'll just keep repeating that a bunch of times until my handle is as long as I want it to be. And then I'll show you how I attach it on the other side. So I've been crocheting rows of double crochet back and forth. I've done a total of 25 rows, and now it's time to attach our handle. So the first step is to figure out where I'm going to attach us. A really simple way to do this is keeping our bag folded flat, is we're gonna fold it in half. And remember, we're like on this inside here. So we follow it along there, and figure out where we need to attach it. So right about here, this stitch looks about the right spot. So I'll put a stitch counter through that. And of course we wanna keep our handle straight, we don't want it twisted up. So depending on how many rows you do, whether it's an odd number, or an even number, and how you straight it on this side, you might be working right to left, or you, if you're on this side, you might be working left to right, and you would just turn your bag around the other way. But to attach it, all I'm going to do is just slip stitch together. So to do that, I'm gonna go, I've got this slip knot on my hook, I'm gonna go through the bag, and then I'm gonna go through this rightmost stitch at the top of my bag handle, catch my yarn on the back side with that yarn over, and pull it through both the handle end and the top edge of the bag and the loop on my hook. And that's how I'm gonna join all along the top of this handle. So go through the bag, through the top of the handle, catch the yarn on the back side with the yarn over, and pull that yarn over through everything on the hook. Repeat with a third stitch, go through the bag, go through the handle, work a slip stitch to join it. One more spot, through the bag, through the handle, slip stitch it all together. And then I'll do one more slip stitch after I've gone through everything, one more slip stitch. And then as we did before, trim off end and pull that tail through all the way and cinch it down. This does create a little bit of stitching on the front of the bag, but I feel like it's a pretty strong hold and I personally don't mind the look. So the bag is nearly done at this point. All that's left to do is attach the second handle and I'm gonna do the exact same process and I'll make sure to line it up with the handle on the opposite side and do the same number of rows. So let me finish up the bag and I'll show you how it turned out. Before we look at the finished bag, I wanted to really quick do a little weight test to show you how sturdy and durable these bags are. So I have these two 10 pound weights and my sister here is helping me out here. So here's with one weight in the bag. As you can see, it holds it just fine. The handles stretch a little bit because of the weight, but that's just the stitches stretching. It's not like the bag's about to rip and tear apart. And then here we have the second weight. So that's 20 pounds that this bag is easily holding. Of course, I wouldn't load these up crazy heavy, but I just wanted to show that even though it's made out of plastic bags, which are fairly weak, it is a very sturdy finished product. So anyways, that little demo was just to show that these bags are very sturdy and are very strong. And these work great as either a market bag, a grocery bag, or even a beach bag. And something I love about Plarn bags is they're very easy to clean. So if you take it to the beach, or if your groceries leave something sticky on it, all you have to do is take the bag outside and hose it down and leave it in the sun to dry and you will be good to go. Now I have heard of people washing their Plarn bags in the washing machine with cold water. I haven't personally tried this, but that might be something to look into. But of course, do not dry these bags in the dryer because they will melt. But again, super easy to clean, just hose down outside and let it dry in the sun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this week's project. Let me know in the comments what you've been crocheting these days and also let me know if you're gonna try making this bag. Happy crafting.